I was recently asked to make some recommendations of books on Alfred Hitchcock, so I thought I'd expand on that list a little bit. Now, I'm sure that there are a lot of books that come out over the past decade, but frankly, I've stopped collecting. Now, these are just a handful of titles that I've either found useful or well-researched or well-written, and on a rare occasion, all three. Now, for an analysis of the films, more specifically from the 39 Steps through Family Plot, you can do no better than Donald Spoto's The Art of Alfred Hitchcock. Now, to make up the difference on the early films, I recommend Charles Barr's English Hitchcock. Now, the title is self-explanatory. It's an excellent examination of Hitchcock's work in England, with particular attention paid to the writers that worked on Hitchcock's early films, most notably Elliot Standard and Charles Bennett. Now, Stephen Ribello's book on the making of Psycho is a model for how to chronicle the production of a classic film, which leads us directly to Dan Eiler's book on the making of Vertigo. Both required reading. Now, for Hitchcock's early years in America, Leonard Leff's Hitchcock and Selznick dives deep into the heart of that collaboration and covers fairly well Hitchcock's arrival in America through his failed attempt at starting his own production company, Transatlantic Pictures. Now, Writing with Hitchcock covers the director's early years at Paramount and his collaboration with the screenwriter John Michael Hayes, his most frequent writing collaborator in Hollywood. Now, I recommend this one for obvious reasons. Now, full-scale biography-wise, I lean toward Donald Spoto's The Dark Side of Genius. I feel that Spoto captured the essence of who Alfred Hitchcock was better than anyone. It's often maligned as a tawdry hatchet job, but that criticism has tended to come from Hitchcock circles that want to resurrect what they feel is an image that has been damaged by Spoto's reporting and by the testimony of some writers, performers, and associates that worked with Hitchcock through the years. Now, Patrick McGilligan's biography is well-documented and well-researched and fills in many of the gaps left by Donald Spoto's book, but I don't feel it's as artfully written, and frankly, he quotes... Leff, Ribello, Eiler, Spoto, and myself often enough that you may as well seek out those individual books to get their full story. Now, this last one I'm not really recommending seriously. Theodore Price's Hitchcock and Homosexuality. Uh, I'm only going to say that if you want to be entertained by many what-the-f*** moments of over-the-top film analysis, give it a read. Now, beyond the printed page, I'd like to recommend Daniel Rame's excellent documentary, Something's Gonna Live which is a marvelous journey into the lives of three old friends, Robert Boyle, Albert Nozaki, and Henry Bumstead, who met each other while studying architecture at USC, and whose lives would cross paths again when they ended up working in the movies together, initially as draftsmen until graduating to full-fledged production designers, each with an impressive list of credits that reads like someone's ultimate classic film marathon. Between Saboteur, Shadow of a Doubt, The Man Who Knew Too Much, Vertigo, North by Northwest, The Birds, and Family Plot, Robert Boyle and Henry Bumstead made significant contributions to the look of Alfred Hitchcock's films. It's touching to watch these three 90-plus-year-olds reminisce, and both Boyle and Bumstead kept working right to the end. Henry Bumstead, who passed away at the age of 91, had just completed work on Clint Eastwood's Flags of Our Fathers and Letters from Iwo Jima. And Robert Boyle, who recently passed at the age of 100, was teaching right up until the end. One of the highlights of Something's Gonna Live is the visit to Bodega Bay, paid by Robert Boyle and storyboard artist Harold Michelson, some 30-odd years since they'd been there to make the birds. It reminded me in so many ways of my own experiences interviewing and having conversations with screenwriters John Michael Hayes, Joseph Stefano, and Ernest Lehman. Uh, I only wish that I had documented those conversations and experiences on video as well. So keep an eye out for Something's Gonna Live. Uh, I had the great good fortune of seeing it on film in a theater, but it's now available on DVD from Adama Films and is well worth watching. Till next time, thanks for watching.